So we're looking at M96, which is a spiral galaxy, um, but it's not a spiral galaxy sitting on its own. It's part of a group in the constellation Leo, which includes M95, another spiral galaxy, and M105, which is an elliptical galaxy. I'm going to try and take an image a little bit like this, probably not quite as nice. I'm using this half-meter telescope here in La Palma, and at the moment the only filters available to us are blue, green, and red, essentially. And so we're not going to be able to pick out these exciting features, but hopefully we'll at least be able to see the shape, the fact that it's not just going to look like a normal star, and we might be able to see some of these extended regions as well if we're lucky. So let's say a minute long exposure. It's not very bright, so we need to expose for a long time in the red. And we're looking at M96. I don't have much scientifically to say about this object, but I wanted to look at this image and just talk about how beautiful it is. This is a lovely spiral galaxy, so a flat rotating disk of stars and gas and dust. You can see the spiral arms here and here. You can see lots of blue knots in these spiral arms indicating that new stars are being born there, so it's a young galaxy. You see this collection of stars in the center, which is called the bulge, and you see these very dark filamentary wispy features, which are in fact dust lanes. What's interesting about how they're arranged in this particular galaxy is sort of the asymmetry that you see here. So you can see that the dust lanes are all sort of on this side. The center of the galaxy is sort of offset from the rest of it. This spiral arm is really elongated and almost you know, being detached from the galaxy. And this is reminding us that galaxies like this one don't live their lives in isolation. That a variety of very nasty things can happen to galaxies, particularly when they live close by to neighbors or in a very crowded environment. And what's clearly happened in this case, either due to interactions with these other galaxies, M95 and M105, or perhaps from some historical flyby of some other galaxy, this galaxy has been distorted and it's been distorted by gravity. Here we go, image is written, we've plotted it. There's definitely something here. It's not just a star, but it's quite difficult to see anything more. I'm gonna just fiddle with the color, so you can definitely see the elongated shape of this galaxy. But to really try and get hold of these extended features, we're gonna to have to expose for longer, I think. So that was a minute long exposure. I'm gonna try five minutes, see what that looks like. Time for a quick coffee break, I think. That would mean putting your shoes back on, wouldn't it? Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> There's one more quirk about this galaxy that I wonder, Brady, if you can spot. Well, Do you see anything interesting well, here? Well, the thing I'm interested in is what's going on there. Well, exactly. So if you follow this spiral arm around here, you come to an interesting feature right here. This is, in fact, not part of the galaxy. It's a spiral galaxy all of its own. And what you're seeing is a chance alignment of another spiral galaxy seen edge on rather than face on and almost perfectly in alignment with this spiral arm. Whenever we look at these pictures of space, we're seeing the three dimensions of space squashed down into a single image. So in this particular image, you're seeing stars in our own galaxy, which are practically right in front of us. You're seeing out billions of light years away to external galaxies, but then we're even looking through them. We're seeing background galaxies and even smaller galaxies that are probably even further away. The fact that these chance alignments occur simply speak to how many galaxies there are out there and how big the universe is. Still waiting. Oh. <laughs> So it's much brighter, and then if we change the colour again, there's still a little bit possibly coming out here and here, but it's very difficult to see. I think we're going to struggle to get anything like this in a single image. The reason is that this is a compilation of possibly many hundreds of images um, in different wavelengths, different filters, trying to pick out the different features of this galaxy. We've clearly got a lot of white light and blue light coming from the stars, as well as that there's a lot of red light 
infrared light, which is causing these dust lanes to show up, and H-alpha, which, which comes from hy hydrogen gas, ionized gas. And over here, this is just a single exposure in a single filter. And of course, we can take images in blue light, in green light, and if you take many, many images and combine them, then you can come out with something a little bit more like this.